Well, what's up, guys? I'm Travis, and you're watching Upgraded RC. Check it out guys, Upgraded RC is building a Vanquish VS410 Phoenix. Now this is not an unboxing video. This is not a step-by-step -step build. I'm not going to show you guys anything that's on the box. I'm not going to show you anything that's inside the box. I don't know why everybody does that. They open the box and show you all the parts bags. That's, that's kind of a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. What am I going to show you? I'm going to show you the finished product guys. This is the upgraded build for the VS410 Vanquish Phoenix. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you page by page how I built this, what I did differently, what I greased that Vanquish didn't grease, um, the upgrades that I put into this that they did not put into this, the electronics that I've got into this, how to set up your endpoints and all of your electronics, pretty much how to do everything that you need to know to put this together well, all right, let's go ahead and get started here with bag A. We have got the new F9 plastic portal axle here, which is, it, it, I can't believe how, how beefy this is. I mean, the plastic they're using, I think it's actually like a synthetic blended nylon or something, but wow, it's really strong. And I mean, look at all the support they gave by adding the truss on top of the axle here. The pumpkin is solid. You've even got gussets on the bottom of the steering knuckles here. I mean, that is just really super beefy. And you know, if you're still feeling bad about this being a plastic axle in your new Phoenix, they've also included these brass, these beefy tubes here that are inserts. They go inside the axle like this, and then you put your bearing on the outside. And what that's going to do is that's going to make it even stronger, and it's also going to add some of that weight that we want from these brass tubes down low. So that's really cool, guys. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the plastic that's on this axle. It doesn't make me feel bad about not having a metal axle at all. And I bet these will probably actually slide over the rocks and obstacles a little bit better than the metal one getting caught up here in there. I'd like to point out, guys, these come in a 30 tooth ring and an eight tooth pinion, but you can change that up. I don't know what all the sizes are. I know that there's a 13 and a 43 available. I believe there's also a 13 and a 38 available. I don't know what all sizes are there, but in addition to the six and a half percent and the 33% overdrive, you can change your ring and your pinion in the axle the way that you want it so that you can actually change those overdrive values by just doing this. Now, besides that, you've got gears in the transmission you can change to change your overdrive values. And then after all of that, you've still got a ring in, or your spur and your pinion gear on your motor. I mean, there's all kinds of different gearing ratios here that you can get by just changing a couple of things, and it's super simple. All of the bearings on this whole sheet here, all of them are sealed or shielded. Okay, that means they've got either a rubber piece here which is holding the lubrication inside of this bearing and keeping the rust and dirt and water out. See, like this one here is a shielded bearing. These two right here on your bearing carrier do not have any shielding at all. So these are not sealed. These are exposed to everything. Now, I know they're inside your axle and you shouldn't get any water or grease or, I mean, I'm sorry, water or dirt or mud or anything in there, but there's a possibility. So what I like to do with these is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill these with grease. Now, if you're using this grease, I'd recommend packing these really, really good. I mean, they're going on either side of your spool, which is in your third member. You want everything to be really super smooth. So I would go ahead and grease these. It does not recommend that on the instructions, but I would definitely go ahead and grease those and then you can put it together. So let's get going. Sorry guys, I forgot to tell you about these two shims right here. If you do not know where these go because they are not in the instructions for the bag A part, they are quite a bit further down where you install the drive shaft onto the back of your third member in your pinion. So what these are, these are shims that go on the back side of your pinion before you put your drive shaft on there and it's meant to take up the gap if you have any between your third member the pinion and your drive shaft. So if you've got a gap there, that's what those are for. 
So this is what I was talking about earlier, guys. When you open the book and you're on bag A here at the top of the page, it tells you to go ahead and put your thread lock on these six Allen's here before you put the ring gear onto your spool. And then also right here, see how it's got the on shielded bearings right here on either side of your spool. And it does not recommend anywhere to put grease. Like see, it tells you to put grease here. And I thought this was kind of funny too, guys. Look at this. It shows you the little grease symbol. And what is it in? It's a tub. It's a tub of grease. It's not the tube of grease. <laughs> Just brush it on everything likes grease. Keep turning it and just get it all the way around. Now, I know some people are going to say that I'm using way too much grease. I have heard before that with this particular grease, you're only supposed to use about a pea. Well, I'm using more than that. I'm probably using two or three peas. Now, guys, one thing I did notice that I wanted to point out, when you're putting this little pin right here through your shaft, you can put this pin in and then this gear slides up over it so that this pin goes down inside the gear. Well, one of the problems I had is after you get all that together the way you're supposed to, your next step is to go ahead and stick the shaft through the cover on the housing, on the portal housing here like this. And then you've got another one of these little pins that goes in the hole right here so that you can put your hub on. Now, the problem that I have with this is it doesn't fit very well or I can get it in a little bit and that's it. So I started looking for a problem here and what's going on is this gear is not down all the way over the top of this pin. So what we need to do is go ahead and stand this up like this and take a socket that fits over this gear pretty well and then go ahead and tap it down on there. like that. It doesn't take very much, but it is necessary to get this gear to seat all the way on the shaft the way that it's supposed to be. Now, when we stick this on here and we get our pin through here, we have no problem getting it on there. See how it goes on there right now? It just falls right off. Now, the other thing is once you put your hub on here, they didn't tell you to do this, but I'm going to recommend it you've got this little tiny little tiny socket head that goes in there. I would recommend a little bit of blue Loctite on that before you go ahead and tighten that down. Other okay. than that, guys, go ahead and grease up your gears really good and put it all together. I had no problems with the rest of this axle. Once you get done with these, go ahead and turn both your axles, turn the pinion here, so that your axle shafts move and everything should be free, no binding, no issues, no scraping, no rubbing. If you feel anything like that, then there's something wrong. You're going to probably need to take it apart and address the issue. Now, if you do push in on your pinion while you're doing it, you are going to feel your pinion and your ring binding against each other. That's what these spacers right here are for. So that when you put them on your pinion and you put your drive shaft on it and bolt it down, it's actually pulling out on your pinion a little bit to give it the correct clearance between your ring and pinion so that it turns really smooth. So make sure you do that with both of them. Make sure everything turns really free. There's no problems. The other thing I wanted to point out is that when you're putting your step bolts in or your king pins, whatever you want to call these for your steering knuckles, I usually run mine down all the way to the bottom and then I'll pull it back out a quarter to a half turn, three quarters of a turn, whatever it needs so that these are free. If these aren't free, you're going to end up burning your servo up prematurely while they're trying to turn these because they're too tight. So I wanted to point that out. And also they give you this filler cap for your rear axle, which is really cool. They give you this black plastic one. I'm not sure why, but, and then you have the option of putting this uh, anodized aluminum red one in here. And they also give you this tool right here to go ahead and put it in so that you're not scratching it up with pliers or anything. I thought that was a pretty nice touch that Vanquish did there. So that's it for the axles, guys. Let's move on to the next one. Moving on to bag C. Now, in this bag, you're going to go ahead and put your frame rails together. This is going to consist of your two metal frame rails and your two cross members, the front one and the rear one. Now, in the front one, they want you to go ahead and install your favorite servo on the left side of the front cross member and then use a 20 millimeter servo horn. Now, this is necessary, guys. If you go bigger than a 20 millimeter servo horn here, 
the front of the horn is going to hit the frame and it will not work. Now on the other half of this front cross member, you'll notice there's another opening that looks exactly the same as the one where you just put your steering servo. This is if you would like to put a winch servo in here, like a Reefs 422 or something like that. It'll drop right in this other side. Your line's going to run out this hole right here in the front of this cross member and right out through your front bumper. So that's a pretty awesome option if you want to do that. Now on the rear cross member here, this is basically a fake fuel cell where you could put oh, a receiver or your light control box or maybe just some weight or something, I'm not sure, but you could put whatever you want to in here. And right here you'll notice there is a knockout that goes in between these two pieces. You go ahead and leave that in there and then drill the holes through the center to run your wires, that way everything is still waterproof inside if that's what you're going to do. Now the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory, guys. So I'm not going to go through and show you how to put it together. It's really easy, but I would like to point out something right here on the front where it says note direction of your shock towers. This is incorrect. It's showing the hole for your body post to be towards the front of the vehicle. The hole for your body post needs to be towards the rear of the vehicle. If you open back up to page 25 here, you'll notice that on this page you can see where the body post has been turned the other way. So both body posts, front and rear, should face each other for the holes. They should go to the center, not to the outside. For my servo, I went ahead and went with a Reefs Raw 500 servo. I love these servos, guys. It's the third one I've used. These put out uh, 450 ounces of pull at six volts. At 7.2, they're at 450. And at 8.4, you're all the way up to 565 ounces of pull. So this is plenty enough servo for your steering. You can actually turn your wheels and move rocks out of the way if you want to. Now you also notice I did not use the rubber mounting grommets here or the brass collars that go in here to reduce vibration. Why? Because that is going to pick this up about a quarter inch higher. I mounted the servo right directly to the frame here. Reason being, there's not a whole bunch of clearance here between your servo horn and the frame. So you're going to want to have the servo down on the frame as close as you can get it to give yourself more clearance here. And I did also go with a Vanquish servo horn. I believe that the servo horns from Vanquish work really well with the Vanquish products. They're just designed for it. I would definitely recommend it. I want to show you guys one more thing. I'm not sure if you guys have seen one of these or not. This is a servo tester. And what this does is it tests out your servo for you. Whenever I get a new servo, I like to test it out and make sure that it's working. Number one, see how I can take and I can turn my servo back and forth now. I can make sure that it works, so there's no problems, I don't hear any binding or any issues or rubbing or anything, that's great. Also, sometimes from the factory, your servo may not be set to dead center, so if you go ahead and install this and then put your servo horn on, it might look like this after you turn it on because it wasn't centered correctly. Well, this has got a nifty little gadget here where you just touch it and it self-centers your servo, then you can put your horn on and you know you're in the right place. Well, one more thing that this thing does, it's pretty cool, if you hit the select button again, it's going to go the full range of movement of this servo stock out of box. Now, I know you can take your transmitter and you can adjust the travel to get more or less out of the servo, but that's a pretty cool option to go ahead and turn that on and see if it's going to bind or hit anywhere. If there's any issues, you can fix that right away. So that's about it for the frame. Let's go ahead and move on.